It's been 881 days since the last Tame Impala record, and unless the next one is out by 420, it'll be the longest we've had to wait for a new album by The Australian Outfit. It's not so much that I'm impatient for new music, I'm just really curious to hear what Tame Impala does next. Taking the intricacies of the psychedelic rock genre and combining it with the sugary melodies of modern day pop music has made Tame Impala one of the most notable indie artists today. And that popularity is well earned, as all three of Tame Impala's LPs have received universal acclaim, with fans constantly juggling over which is their favorite. Every new release has moved Tame Impala's sound forward, with the latest being their biggest diversion yet. But before I can tell you more about Tame Impala and their music, we need to talk about Kevin Parker. He is Tame Impala. Nearly every layer you hear on a Tame Impala record was written, recorded, and produced by this man. The band you see in live performances is the touring act, bringing Kevin's work to life on stage. Tame Impala's live band actually comprises of another band named Pond, who released one of the best psych rock albums of 2017, so, you know, sh check them out. To Kevin, collaborating in a studio means having to make compromises in artistic direction, so he does it alone, for the most part. And when you hear the final product, you can't argue with his logic. He knows damn well what he's doing. He constructs these swirling symphonies of sound and doesn't compromise when it comes to meaningful lyrical concepts. Listen closer, and you'll find that Tame Impala's music hangs on the themes of introspective thought, self-doubt, and hopeless romantic feelings. The common thoughts of a perfectionist lost inside of his own head. Born in Sydney, raised in Perth, Kevin surrounded himself with music his entire life his father being his biggest influencer. He taught him how to play guitar, introduced him to the melodies of the Beatles, the Beach Boys, and Supertramp, and bought him his very first guitar. While kids were outside playing and riding bikes, teenage Kevin was recording his own music. His instruments were his toys, and his hobby soon became his obsession. But his father told him to avoid the music industry, explaining that the magic would fade once it became a job. Listening to his father, Kevin went to university for engineering, but soon switched to astronomy in hopes of just doing something fun. But his passion lied in music. He'd be more focused on writing his next song than attending lectures. At that time, Kevin was a part of a band called the DD Dumbs with high school friends Dominic Simper and Luke Epstein. They gained some local recognition while allowing Kevin to stretch his musical ability. In 2007, Kevin started his own project under the name Tame Impala. Rather than using his own name, he chose a moniker to blend in with the rise in popularity of Australian bands. He uploaded his music where all aspiring musicians did at the time, on MySpace. And on his way to his final astronomy exam, Kevin got a call for modular recordings for a record deal. He turned his car around, went home, and wrote more music. If he gained anything from his astronomy classes, it was the inspiration for the cover art for Tame Impala's EP. Before the release of his debut album, he led with a handful of songs picked from about a dozen tracks recorded in the earlier years of the project. He recruited friends Dominic Simper and newcomer Jay Watson to join him in polishing up these tracks and bringing them on the road. The EP would go on to garner them local radio play, land them spots on Australia's festival circuit, and have them open up for bands like MGMT and the Black Keys. Even here, Kevin's inner frustrations were present. On Desire Be, Desire Go, he mentions his distaste for the 9 to 5 work week. Skeleton Tiger acts as a mantra in doing what you desire as we'll all be gone one day anyways, and Slide Through My Fingers has Kevin fearing that he might be letting opportunities in life and love literally slip from his grasp. After touring for a year and releasing the single Sundown Syndrome, Kevin's father passed away from a year-long battle with cancer. He would never see his son attain success in the industry he warned his son to avoid, but I think he'd be proud to realize that Kevin's choice to follow music wasn't such a ridiculous decision after all, considering how well the world took to his debut, Inner Speaker. The name was in reference to these tracks coming from within Kevin. The idea that a song just appears to you vividly, and if someone plugged a stereo into your brain, they'd be able to hear it. The cover art definitely reflects that idea of pushing inwards with its Drost effect. It received praise for creating a modern twist on the psychedelic rock sound of the late 60s. But again, Kevin plays with the themes of isolation, anxiety, and unrequited love, like in the opening track, It's Not Meant To Be. Kevin is aware of his doomed relationship, but can't help but hold on. 
or on Alter Ego, where he confronts his inner self that is preventing him from creating meaningful social interactions. And on the aptly titled Solitude is Bliss, where he mentions his content with being alone. Inner Speaker released, and Kevin was already working on his next album. He had much more time to experiment and completely indulge, since Modular wasn't expecting a new album for another two years. Kevin began recording demos of songs while touring the world, and eventually bunkered down in a Paris apartment to put together this psych rock masterpiece, Lonerism. Well, it feels like an It surpassed all expectations that had been set by Inner Speaker. The attention to detail is absolutely mind-blowing. It's smart, meticulously layered, weird at times, and poppy at others. I still notice new sounds when I'm actively listening. Do yourself a favor. Wear a great pair of headphones, listen loud, and you'll be swimming in a cosmic ocean of melody. The photo on the cover was taken by Kevin himself while in Paris, and is meant to display that separation between him and everyone on the other side. The whole album is about someone who doesn't feel a part of the rest of the world. Their struggle with isolation, escaping the current reality and the constant hesitance in chasing your dreams, it's Kevin's thoughts on confronting inner fears and criticisms, as well as his distractions by unreturned love. His breakup with French singer-songwriter Melody Prochet had him leave Paris and head back to Western Australia. Like clockwork, locked in isolation without distractions, Kevin began writing more music shortly after the release of Lonerism. A drug-induced revelation told him to develop his sound beyond rock, and his obsession returned. He was working on music all day, every day, at a fairly lax pace. His perfectionist nature had him recording thousands of vocal takes because every minute detail tormented Kevin to the point where he had to push his deadline back nearly six months. He poured his entire heart and soul into recording, performing, and producing Currents, entirely on his own. And it shows. Currents is Kevin Parker finally liberated. He moved his sound towards intricate pop music, with a focus on instrumental depth, something that seems to be severely lacking in modern day pop music. But not only did his sound evolve, Kevin himself seems to overgo a personal transformation. No more is this evident than on the hypnotic opening, Let It Happen. Kevin was always happy with his solitude, but I think he realizes that it was beginning to take more energy to shut everyone out than it does to just let it happen and be a part of what's on the other side of that gate. Kevin adopted confidence. He found himself in his clouded thoughts of self-doubt. But then Currents closes with new person's same old mistakes, speaking about accepting change and self-doubt as natural occurrences. He ends the album on a question, so how will I know that it's right? And the answer is he won't. Kevin will always chase perfection. He is still the same introspective person he was on Inner Speaker and Lonerism, but now he's comfortable with that. I don't know how many more days, months, or years we'll have to wait for the next Tame Impala album. I trust Kevin will put his entire soul into whatever he does next. We'll get a new album, eventually. Thanks for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoy the video, please give it a like rating, subscribe to learn more about the music you love, and please consider supporting Middle 8 on Patreon. It's a fast and easy way to help support me in making quality videos like these. I'm a college student and I write and edit these videos in my spare time, and I don't want to stop. These last few weeks have been crazy, and I can't thank you all enough for enjoying my videos thus far. Tell me, where do you think Kevin Parker is going to go with his next album? And keep listening.